Hello designers, this is Angie from Raveners Design Academy. Welcome back if you're already subscribed and welcome here if you're new. In last week's video, we talked about Yuri's camera setup for rendering a regular perspective and the 360 panorama. We also covered camera placement, angle, height, and how to pair SketchUp's field of view with V-Ray's aspect ratio. I really recommend watching that video, which will be linked down below. In my next video, on Thursday, we'll finish off this series with rendering a section cut using V-Ray's Mesh Clipper. In today's video, we'll talk about the setup for a top view or plan view render. So let's get this tutorial started. As always, the first step to setting up any render would be camera placement. This time, we'll go up and over our space while looking down. In order for this view to come out looking as neat or as realistic as possible, we'll turn off any outdoor lights, such as V-Ray Sun, and you'll want to have lights already placed inside the space itself. And for those lights to show up while rendering, you'll want to hide them along with your ceiling, not disable their layer. Disabling the layer will cause the lights not to show while rendering, and that's not logical now, is it? To have a perfectly aligned top view, you'll want to use SketchUp's Views toolbar and choose Top. The camera will align itself perfectly above the model. When rendering a plan, section, or elevation, there is two main ways you can do this. You can either render in a perspective or in parallel projection. Parallel projection will make your walls look flat, but your objects will still look 3D with cast shadows. Kind of more like a plan made in layout or AutoCAD, but with a more visually interesting twist. As for perspective, this will give your walls a bit of depth and show off any details you may have on them. But this is where we'll need to tweak the camera's field of view, or FOV. I'll change my FOV to 10, which I recommend, and I'll show you what I mean. You can see the walls and their details in a way, but they're not overpowering the rest of the objects in the space. You can also tell where the door and the window are. If I revert back to an FOV of 70, which was my default, there are too many details showing for one scene, and it looks like you're looking at the space through a well. Everything is just too far down, it's distracting. I'll show you the difference via exported images here so you can easily see the difference. Here's an exported image with a field of view of 70. And here's an exported image with a field of view of 10. Personally, I'd prefer to be looking at a plan with an FOV of 10, much neater and looks way more professional. Let's move on to the render setup of a scene like this. First, I'll adjust my aspect ratio. There's no right or wrong here. Set the aspect ratio to the size that looks best with the shape of your model. For this model, it's a one-to-one -one or a square. I'll also zoom in as much as I can so I don't waste any pixels on dead space. Next, we'll have to turn off or disable all exterior light sources. I'll start by disabling dome light. And over here, my sun is already disabled. Finally, I'll disable all GI and environment lights. Reflection, refraction, and secondary matte are not emitting any light. They're more of a supplementary texture to GI and background, so I'll leave them as they are. Of course, I have all my interior lights hidden but active, but I'll need to highlight that this is a window here over here by giving it a light source that mimics my HDRI light. I'll save my scene first by updating the name tab over here. And then I'll navigate to the outside of the window to place a light source. I'll go with a rectangle light, since it's the most suitable for this window type. Hey, 
direct it towards the window itself and bring it in closer to the glass. I don't have to worry about it showing in my final image because first, it's outside in the dead space that should be cropped out of the image. Second, I'll set it as invisible. If you've seen my previous video, you'll know that my HDRI casts a bluish tinted light through the window. So that's what I'll try and replicate with the rectangle light. As you can see from the preview, the color of the light is now close enough and it will show through the glass material of the window perfectly on a default intensity of 30. For the door here, I've already set up a rectangle light that emits a faint warm light through the gaps to give the illusion of a room on the other side. I'll just amp it up a little bit, so it's just in case it shows up in my render. I won't set this rectangle light as invisible because I actually want it to show through the door. Now to make sure that all my ceiling lights will end up illuminating the space for me, I'll navigate the switches under the render parameters rollout and double check that hidden lights is enabled. This is important because if hidden lights is not enabled, no lights that are hidden in my scene will emit light. I'll set my render output to be auto-saved and I'll set the resolution to 800 by 800 pixels because this is just a test render. I'll also run the interactive render to make sure everything is as it should be. Yep, everything is A-OK -okay over here, so I'm all set to run a full test render. And here it is. The space is just a little bit too bright, so I'll adjust the brightness through the color correction panel. There we go. And I think I'll also render the scene in parallel projection to give you an idea of how the image will come out.
As you can see, the walls are now merely big thick borders with, with no details whatsoever. I can later on edit in some door and window symbols to the final image using Photoshop. My favorite part of a parallel projection render is that the shadows and the reflections are giving the space a perception of depth even though it's completely flat and it looks really amazing. Here are the final results for both the renders made today after a little bit of post-production. And that's it for part 2 of this series. Stay tuned for part 3 coming Thursday where we'll talk about creating a section or an interior elevation via the V-Ray Mesh Clipper. Make sure you like this video if you found it useful and subscribe if you aren't so you get more videos like this every week. Thank you for watching and happy designing!